why set up a fake fight? Like, we passed the SAVE Act, uh, I think it was on July 10th. We passed it. The House has passed it. Uh, for everyone to stand in there and say that we have to vote for this, but in order to vote for it, you have to vote for a continuing resolution that continues uh, the Biden administration's budget that pays for the Green New Deal, that pays for all these horrific things that people are sick of, it is absurd. It's absurd. And it's going to frustrate people because our, the base, a Republican base, will know that they're being lied to. And they're tired of being lied to. And we have an election coming up on November 5th. The worst thing that Republicans in the House can do is create a fake fight that the base knows they're lying about and frustrate our voters going into November 5th. That's how you lose the House of Representatives on an election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here is a little bit more detail on her position. This is reporting from The Hill. It says Green is one of several Republicans opposed to Johnson's plan. She didn't confirm that she would vote against the government funding plan, but at least six others said they would, which could potentially tank the effort. And then Speaker Johnson responded to all of the infighting saying this. He said, I understand the perils of a shutdown. I understand the risk and we are going to do the right thing and we're going to see what happens. A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. Why is the extreme right wing of the, of, the, of the House fighting to push this extreme plan? It's because they don't believe that the speaker's real plan is as Green hinted that it's just kind of like a fake fight line. And with that said, here is reporting from Axis. Uh, it says Johnson has repeatedly denied that he has a plan B if his proposal fails. But some of his GOP colleagues privately predict he will push a compromise measure in the end. That will likely need to happen under a process that requires a two thirds majority for it to pass, meaning a significant chunk of Republicans would join the with Democrats to vote for it. And with the GOP in chaos over all of this, Johnson may have to turn to Democrats who are already strategizing. They said uh, with current funding set to expire on September 30th, Democratic leaders are plotting with the White House to try to force Republicans to instead accept a short term spending bill that would fund the government through mid December. All right, just like a band aid solution there. The Democrats goal is to get funding beyond the December deadline to avoid a lame duck session of Congress, setting up a tough spending fight in Congress for a hopeful Harris administration come January 20th. They plan to message around the harm to military readiness and veterans care and disaster sorry, disaster relief and other national security priorities to achieve this. And the alternative is a shutdown they can blame on an irresponsible GOP as voters go to the polls. So either way, it kind of works out for the Democrats. Uh, Brett, how do you think this is all gonna shake out? Do you think we're gonna have a government shutdown or do you think maybe even Johnson will lose his gavel? Uh, I don't think that if Johnson loses his gavel, it is indicative of such chaos in the Republican Party that that is like a levy breaking for a yeah. blue wave to just. I and mean, that's destroy. how he got the gavel in the first place, right? Exactly, and he's been just vanilla, and you know, he just seems like he's trying to sell me Bibles enough to to just be like, "Hi, what are you doing there, friend?" Um, and and get through it without that kind of insanity. And he has been a person who. You know, maybe it's just because it's relative to previous people who have been absolutely crazy. He's like, I actually do want to get these things passed because I don't want to be the one uh, holding the bag when you know it's time to have the election. I don't want to be the one responsible for losing seats and thus my speakership. His own job hangs mm -hmm. by a thread, and the important thing is him winning seats, not Trump winning, but they're kind of hand in hand. Um, but the only real fake fight I want people to focus on here is not the fake fight between Republicans. They're a mess, everybody knows it, and, and mm -hmm. she's right when she says they, they might lose the house. Um, the fake fight is this fight against election security failures. There is no election security problem. Like it's literally 0.0001% or something like that of votes. We've shown on TYT that stat so often. They're making up the problem. Why? Well, Trump cries about it all the time and everybody's had it. He, he can't stand the fact that as Kamala Harris put it, over 80 million Americans fired him 
-hmm. by voting. He lost, I mean, he's trying He's trying to, to win on technicalities because he can't win based on what human Americans want. And, that, and that's what they're, they're trying, they're creating. They might shut the government down because they've made up a boogeyman that doesn't exist. Yeah, and it's really disappointing and it's frustrating because as Americans, we've been watching this kind of dysfunction for so many years to the point where, you know, even I was talking about this the other day to somebody and sorry if I'm getting a little bit off topic, but every time we would have some kind of like a, uh, the, the Supreme Court justices and they were being here, they were doing their hearings to see if they would make it onto the bench. It was just like, yeah, they're just gonna go through all of this stuff. They're gonna say all of it. It doesn't really matter because they're all gonna vote one way or another because the way our Congress functions right now is we don't have individuals in there anymore who can think for themselves and vote based on each individual issue. They just vote as an entire block for the most part. If we're lucky, we get a few people on either side who are saying, I'm not going to do what everybody else is doing, but those are rare. And whenever it does happen, a lot of times they do get beat back into submission. So it really is dysfunctional. It's really disheartening because even with a Democratic president in the White House right now, there's still so little that we can do. Trump actually did bring that up last night in the debate that the Democrats, even though they have the White House, they can say that they want to do something, but they're not going to get the votes in Congress for it. So that's where we are. It's really, it's really disheartening. I don't think either that uh, Mike Johnson would lose the gavel over this, but you never know. And they are very petty on the Republican side of Congress. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Members make a difference here at TYT. You help make the show happen and we see you in the chat with your loyalty badge. Click the join button to become a member today.